In this video, we're going to look at solving some more trig equations. We're going to look at equations that can be written in the form sine of n theta plus alpha is equal to k, cos of n theta plus alpha is equal to k, and then finally we will have tan of n theta plus alpha is equal to k. If we consider now n theta, we call this now a multiple angle. So we might have sine 2 theta is equal to 0 0.4. We might have cos of 3 theta is equal to minus 0 0.6. Tan of 1 half theta is equal to 2. So that would be an example if we just had sine of n theta. What I've done here is included plus alpha. This then gives us what we call a compound angle. We started to look at compound angles in the last video. So an example of this one might now be sine of 2 theta minus 15 degrees is equal to 1 half. We might have, for example, cos of 3 theta minus pi by 4 is equal now to minus root 3 over 2. We might have tan of 1 half theta minus 24 degrees is equal to 0 0.7. These are all examples now of compound angles and also a multiple angle involved. What I want to do is just consider two different graphs. Now if we look at sine theta is equal to now one half in the interval where theta is between zero and 360 and sine of two theta is equal to one half in the same interval, we're going to come up now with two different results. So if we think about now the sine of theta, let's go ahead and do that. We'll do now the sine of theta. Sine theta, if we draw the curve from 0 to 360, we know it ends up looking something like that. 0, 180, then we have 360. We can see that we're going to have two solutions to the equation sine theta is equal to 1 half. We've got one here at 30 and one here at 30 back from 180. And that gives us our special angles. We've met those in the past. Let's consider now the graph transformation that takes theta, sine of theta, to sine of 2 theta. Well, that's a 1 over 2 scale factor stretch in the x direction. So what we end up with then is the curve. And that now completes one full cycle in 180 degrees. So what we'd have for 360 is something that looks like this. So if I'm solving it, sine of 2 feet is equal to 1 half, in the same interval, we can see that we're going to have double the number of solutions. Now, if I consider sine of 3 feet, then I'm going to have triple the solutions. If I had sine of 1 half feet, then I'm going to have half the solutions. So we need to bear this in mind. And whilst that's a bit of a, a sort of um, sweeping statement as such, it's important to understand that we're solving it now. Sine of 2 feet is 1 half and not just sine of feet is equal to 1 half. To solve these types of equations, we can change the interval to match the multiple angle. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and solve this one right here. Sine of 2 theta is equal to 1 half. And what we're going to do is take theta now, and we're going to be interested in theta between 0 and 360 degrees. So what we have is sine of 2 theta is equal to 1 half. We're interested in theta between 0 and 360. So one way we can do this is to change this now to the multiple angle. So what we'd have is 0, we would have 2 theta, and we'd be interested now in solving for 2 theta between 0 and 720. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, if I find the principal value, we know that that's one of our special angles. We know that the inverse sine of 1 half gives us now 30 degrees. So 2 theta will be equal to 30 degrees. So I'm solving for 2 theta. If we now consider the next one, we know that the sine of theta will be equal now to the sine of 180 minus theta. So we can use this symmetry to say that that's going to be now uh, 30 degrees back from 180, so we've got 150. So this is my first set of solutions. What we can now say is that we're going to have subsequent solutions 360 degrees on for both. Or, if you like, at this stage, you could say plus 360n. 
plus 360n. So what we're doing here is considering now solutions for 2 theta between 0 and 720. Alternatively, you could just write these out, and you could write 2 theta is going to be equal now to 30 plus a 360. So what we're doing, we're jumping now between the two. So this right here, this is going to give me now uh, 2 theta, so that's going to be 390. And then we're going to add on 360. We're going to have 2 theta is going to be equal to 510 degrees. So if we consider now adding another 360, we will go outside the interval. Therefore, what I need to do is solve for these. So if I just divide them all by 2, we can see that theta will be equal now to 30 over 2, which is 15. We're going to have 150 over 2, which is 75. We've got now 390 over 2, which is going to give us now, what's that going to give us? 195. And then we're going to have now 510, and we're going to divide that by 2, which is going to be 255. Now, what you might notice is that these solutions now are 180 degrees on from one another. At this stage, what I've done is said plus 360n. An alternative is to solve for these now these two values and say that theta will be equal to 30 over 2, which is 15, plus now 180n, because we're considering now for theta. And 2 theta, quite clearly, is going to yield solutions every 180 degrees rather than 360. So we could say on the next one, that's going to be 75 plus 180n. So it's entirely up to you on how you want to look at that. You can list them out and go ahead from there. Or you can just write this as now the two, uh, the principal value, and by symmetry the next one, and then subsequent solutions, given that we're now splitting this interval. Again, if this was 3 theta, we would consider solutions 120 on. If it was 4 theta, it would be 90 degrees on. If it was 1 half theta, it would be 720 degrees on. So that's one approach. Now, alternatively, you don't have to alter the interval. You solve for 2 theta, list them all out, and then bring them back into the interval for theta at the end. So it's entirely up to you. You decide. OK, let's go ahead and look at another one. So here are our solutions right here. Let's look at another one. Let's say we've got now tan of 3 theta. So this time we've got now a multiple angle. We've got no value of alpha just yet. And we'll say that this is going to be equal now to 1 quarter. We're going to be interested now in theta between 0. And let's take this to 180 degrees. So what we could do now is match up the interval now with the multiple angle. So if we did that, I'd be multiplying each part of the inequality. So we'd have 3 theta, and this would now give me 540 degrees. So at this stage, I could write that 3 theta is going to give me the inverse tan now of 1 fourth. This isn't one of our special angles, so we'd need to use a calculator to find that. So let's look at this now. What we're going to have is a principal value. So we can say now the principal value, and we're solving for 3 theta. So in a calculator, we're going to put this now in degrees mode. So shift mode 3 if it's not already in there. Shift mode 3, and we're going to solve now for the inverse tan of 0.25. That gives me now 14.036 and so on and so forth. So what we've got is 3 theta is equal to 14 point, and what was it, 0, 3, 6, 0, 3, 6, uh, dot, 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 and so on and so forth. Now let's consider tan. If we have now tan x, we can say that this is going to be equal to tan of 180 plus x. We simply now consider subsequent solutions on 4 3 theta. So what we've got here is plus now 180 n. So, if you want to go for that approach, you can do. So, what we'd have, if I just listed these out, we'd have 3 theta, adding, we would end up with now the 194, and all we would do is go up now to 540, 194.036. We would say now that 3 theta is going to be, if I add, now what's that going to give me? That's going to give me 374.036. If I do the next one, if I add now 180, we're going to go outside the interval. So all we need to do at this stage is split these all by 3. And that will now give us the solutions for theta, not 3 theta. 
Alternatively, what we could have done at this stage right here is split both sides now by three. So if I did that, what I'd do here is just split it by three, and that's going to give me 4.678 and so on and so forth. 4.678 dot 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 plus now if we consider this is going to give me now on here the subsequent solutions are going to be 60n all we're going to be having now are subsequent solutions every 60 degrees on as the tan curve cycles every 180 so we just this one we'd add 60 we'd add 60 that is essentially what we're doing until we now fall in to 180 and as we can see if we did that uh, we would have this now, this is our principal value, then we'd have 64 point, let's just round this, 64.7, then we'd have 124.7, and of course the next one we would go outside the interval. So as you can see, that's an alternative approach. You can alter the interval, you can solve and bring it back in, you can graph it, but essentially now we have a multiple angle and we need to consider um, some alteration of that interval. Okay, let's move on and look at another one. In this video, I want to do um, quite straightforward examples. In later videos, when we go through and practice the trig equations, I want to try some more challenging ones. But for now, when we use exact values, it's easier to get a handle of it as you can locate those values. So let's go ahead and solve now. Let's make this fairly straightforward. Let's take the sine of two theta, and this time we will subtract 30 degrees, and we will now have this equal to root three over two, and we'll be interested now in theta between zero, and we'll take this to 360 degrees. Okay, what we could do is change the interval. So if I consider changing the interval, I could write now that zero, and just multiplying theta by two, that's going to give me zero, two theta, then we're going to have now 720. At this stage, I'm gonna subtract the 30 from each part, so we get minus 30, two theta minus 30, and then we're going to have now 690. So all I've done is written it such that my interval has been changed to this multiple angle. You certainly don't have to do that, but what we could do is consider solutions now for that compound angle. And they would sit now between negative 30 and 690. Alternatively, you can leave it alone and then bring it back into the interval at the end. So let's go ahead and do that. I've chosen this one now as that is one of our special angles. The inverse sine of root three over two gives us a principal value for now two theta minus 30 degrees. So two theta minus 30 will be equal now to 60 degrees. By symmetry, we can say 2 theta minus 30 will be, for the sine curve, remember we're solving now for this angle right here, it's going to be 180 minus that value. So we end up now with 120 degrees. Now we're interested in this from negative 30 up to 690. Clearly if I subtract a multiple of 360, I'm gonna go outside that interval. But what we're going to do now is just think about now adding now 360n. So we're just adding now multiples of 360 to get this. That's the first approach. So if we consider the next set, we've got 2 theta minus 30 will be equal now to 420. I'm just adding on 360. 2 theta minus 30 is going to be equal to, and I'm going to add this on, that's going to give me now 480 degrees. Now, if I went ahead and added another multiple on, I'm going to go outside the interval. Therefore, I don't need to do that. All we would do at this stage is solve for each of these. So if I solve for this one, I'm going to add 30 to both sides and divide by 2. That would give me now, showing full workings if it was an in exam, we'd have 90 over 2, which is 45. If we consider now adding the 30 to both sides and dividing by 2, 150 over 2, theta is going to be equal to now 75. If we now look at this one, if I add this now and then divide by 2, I'm going to end up now on there with 200. What are we going to have? We're going to have on there 225. So let's write that there, 225. And then on this one right here, we're going to end up now adding. That's going to give me 510. So this is going to give me theta is equal to 255. Now, did I need to work those out? Well, we can see that that's plus 180 and that is plus 180. 
If you didn't want to alter the interval, you can just bring them back. I've just said they've got to sit between here. But ultimately, if you just list them out, you can bring them back anyhow. Now, at this stage, what we could have done instead is solved for these two. Now, if you like, we can go ahead and solve. And what we can do is simply consider subsequent solutions now on from here. So if you wanted to now solve for the first one, what we could say here is now, if I'm going to add the, uh, the 30 to both sides and then divide by 2, I can say that theta will be equal now to 60 plus 30, which is 90, divided by 2, which is going to be 45 plus now 180n. So we could take this back if we wanted the interval backwards, or we could take it forwards. If I solved for this one now, I would add the 30 divided by 2. This would give me 75 plus 180n, as this curve is going to repeat every 180 degrees. In the same way, 3 theta would repeat every 120 degrees, and we'd add 120. So essentially, we're finding these two values and then just saying, well, that's what we're going to cycle. And as we can see, if n is 1, we get this value. If n is 1, we get this value. So hopefully this is giving you some alternative ways. I know many people just like to think about listing these out and then bringing them back into the interval. So we could list another one. And then if it didn't fit in for 1 theta between 0 and 360, then we'd discount it. In the same way, if I went backwards now, then I could discount it. So if I looked at the 1, if we went, let's write this, 2 theta. Say we were unsure because we got this minus 30. Let's say we got 2 theta minus 30. If I take this one back 360, that's going to be minus 240. I would add now 30 to both sides and then split both sides by 2 and we would see that that would fall outside the interval. If I did another one and I added one to theta minus 30 is going to be equal to 780. So what I'm doing is adding 360 here. So what's that going to be if I do 780? If I add now the 30 to both sides, which is going to give me 8 to 10, 8 to 10 over 2 is going to give me 405. So you could just list them out and say, well, that doesn't actually fit into the interval. So I can discount it. So this right here is not always necessary. And as you can see, it's potentially quite fiddly. So you can make that decision um, as to whether you think that you want to do that. Um, okay, let's look at one more. Let's look at, let's look at one in radians. Let's make one in radians. Let's take cos of one half theta. Um, and let's add to this. Let's go pi by 6. Now, when you're working with uh, radians, often it's hard to get an, an appreciation of the magnitude of um, a fraction. Uh, so, for example, if I had now 13, 13 pi by 8, is that going to be bigger than 7 pi by 3, for example? Um, it, it just takes a little getting used to and just a bit of calculation. So, let's go ahead now and just have a go at this one. So, we've got this time 1 half theta. So, if I drew this graph, we would have what I would call a more lazy graph. So, instead of cycling every 360 degrees or 2 pi radians in this case, we would cycle every 720 degrees. It's divided by half, which means we put a scale factor stretch of 2 on it. Um, let's choose an interval. Let's go for now theta. Remember, we're working in radians. Let's go for uh, from 0. Uh, and we'll go to 4 pi to make this slightly more interesting. So what I'm going to do now is alter the interval. As stated, this isn't mandatory. You might find it helpful. So that's now going to give me 2 pi. So if theta is equal, uh, or theta is between these two values, 1 half theta is going to be between those. I'm now going to add pi by 6 to each part, so pi by 6. Then we're going to get 1 half theta plus pi by 6. And then we're going to get 2 pi plus pi by 6. Well, 2 pi, if we put it over 6, is 12 pi by 6 plus pi by 6 is 13 pi by 6. So straight away we can see this method um, is going to be slightly uh, slightly challenging uh, if we're not too hot uh, with fractions or trig values. So let's get a principal value now and that principal value is 4 now, 1 half theta plus pi by 6. Again I've chosen quite a nice value here. If we're working in radians and we take now the inverse cosine, we can say that the principal value for 1 half theta plus pi by 6 is going to be equal to pi by 3. That's one of our special angles. We know that the cos of x will be equal to the cos of 360 minus x. So in this case, it will be 2 pi 
minus x. That's the symmetry of the cosine curve, and we've seen that in previous videos. We also know that cos x is going to be equal to cos of 360 plus x, so subsequent solutions will be 2 pi on. Okay, so let's do the next one. So 1 half theta plus pi by 6. So this one now, if we just consider the cosine curve, we've uh, as stated, we've seen this time and time again. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, let's do that. So cosine curve, if we've got now something that looks like that, if we've got one just here, and this is going to be 60 degrees in, or pi by 3, then the, the same uh, value is going to be now pi by 3 back from 2 pi. So 2 pi minus pi by 3. Uh, 2 pi is going to give us 6 pi by 3 minus pi by 3. That's 5 pi by 3. So these now are our first two solutions. So what we're looking for is this now between uh, pi by 6 and we're going to have now uh, 13 pi by 6. So if we think about this now, this one is going to be pi by 3, which is in the interval. Pi by 6 is less than pi by 3. Remember, this is 2 pi by 6. In fact, what I'm going to do is just make this slightly, uh, let's just make it slightly easier. Let's just write these as now uh, 2 pi by 6, uh, just to give some, uh, I suppose, magnitude to these fractions. This is 2 pi by 6, and this is 5 pi by 3, which is 10 pi by 6. So if I now add subsequent multiples of 2 pi, then we're going to go outside the interval. So all we need to do at this stage right here, and I'm just considering this one right here now, is just to solve for these. So let's go for the first one. 1 half theta will be equal now to, I'm going to subtract pi by 6 from both sides, which is going to give me pi by 6. Therefore, multiplying both sides by 2, we can say now that theta is going to be pi by 3. So that's one solution, okay? And then the next one right here, if we do this one, we're going to subtract that away. That's going to give me 9 pi by 6. 9 pi by 6 is 3 pi by 2. So let's just write this in. So we've got 1 half feet is equal to 9 pi by 6. 9 pi by 6 is going to be 3 pi by 2. So the next one is going to give us feet is equal to 3 pi. So let's just check that. 9 pi by 6. Uh, so 9 over 6, and that gives us 3 over 2 if we just divide by 3. So these are the solutions. Now, if we consider subsequent solutions, at this stage, what we could have said is plus 2 pi n plus 2 pi n, because these are now going to occur for that angle 1 half theta plus pi by 6. Remember, we're taking that as the angle. These are going to happen now 2 pi on. Now, alternatively, what you could do is consider now that if we uh, just wrote this and solve now for uh, theta here, we would consider subsequent solutions, not 2 pi on, but 4 pi on, um, because we've got 1 half theta. So as stated, it's entirely up to you. You can bring them into the interval to begin with, or you can bring them out or bring them back into the interval at the end. It's, it is really your choice on how you do this, as long as you're consistent. Um, I personally like this as a method to think about this now as multiples of 2 pi. But also, we could just solve for theta and then consider now the subsequent solutions given that we're altering now the value of our cycle. So there are two relatively um, straightforward examples given the, the values that we're using because we're using exact values. Sometimes they won't be as pretty and as clean, but as long as you're consistent and you write out your sets of solutions, then you will end up now with, uh, with the correct answer to them. Let's just do one more, and I'm not going to solve this one. All I want to do is, is sort of start off the workings. So let's say we've got cos of 3x, and then what we're going to have now, let's go for minus 15 degrees is going to be equal to, let's go for root 3 over 2, okay? And we're interested now in x, let's say we're interested in x between 0 and 360. This time, I'm not going to change the interval, I'm just going to bring this back at the end. So principal value, okay, PV, for 3x minus 15 is going to be equal to the inverse cosine of root 3 over 2, which gives us 30 degrees. By symmetry, we're going to have 3x minus 15 is going to be equal to 30 back from 360, 330. At this stage, all I'm going to do is list these out. The next ones, we're going to have 3x minus 15, I'm going to add 360 on. So we end up with 390. 
3x minus 15. We're going to add now the 360 on, which will give me 690. So 690. Let's list up another one. So this is kind of saying, well, I don't really know where I'm going, but I'll just keep adding multiples. So what's that going to be? If I add 360 to that one, we're going to end up now with 750. So let's put that on. We've got 750. And if I add now, that's going to give me uh, 10. What we're going to have? 1050. Um, so let's go ahead and add that on. So if I add 360 to that, let's put this here. Uh, 3x minus 15 is 1. So we've got 1050. So at this stage, we can just individually take these and force them back into this interval for x. So if I add 15 and divide by 3, x is going to be equal to 15. If I now go ahead and add 15 to both sides, that's 3, 4, 5. So what are we going to get? 172 point, uh, what are we going to get? Uh, let's just work that out. 115. One, so let's go for 115. Let's write this down. So we've got now x is equal to, uh, then we're going to have 115. So let's just check that. If I add 15, that's going to give me 445. Divide it now by 3. That works. So what we can see now, if we were a bit sort of, uh, switched on, we could just now add multiples of 120 to these. But let's say we didn't know that. Let's just add this. That's 405. 405 now divided by. Um, 3, 405 divided by 3 is going to be 135. So x is equal to 135. If I now add uh, the 15 to this one, that's going to give me 705. So if I now uh, divide that by 3, I'm going to end up with what? 235. Uh, x will be equal to 2. 3, 5. As you can see, these are following a pattern. Now at this stage, I'm not going to be bothered because all I'm going to do is add 120 here. So x is going to be equal to 2, 5, 5. Um, x is going to be equal now, if I add another 120, 3, 5, 5. Um, so there are solutions. So you can see that it can be kind of I suppose you don't have to worry about altering the interval. You could just go, and if you were concerned about negative quantities, you would just move it backwards and subtract. So we go to minus 330, minus 30, and then solve for those as well. So if you want a more mechanical process, and again, a little more time consuming, and you'll come up with some uh, solutions outside the interval potentially. But as you can see, that, um, that looks pretty good. So there we go. In this video, we've looked at solving what we call multiple angles. Multiple angles, cos of 3 theta, cos of 2 theta, sine of 5 theta. And we've also looked at multiple angles that have become compound angles when we have the form now of n theta plus alpha. So we've added one. So there we go. Um, so we're all building towards uh, bringing these skills together in a later video where we just pick an equation and just say, well, we know how to deal with this. So we'll go ahead and just attack different examples.